Good morning, everybody. My name is Damien Costello, a uh, Chagas Sheep Specialist based here in Athen Rye. And at this stop, our focus will be on hill sheep. Hill sheep farming is a really important part of the overall sheep industry. With, according to the, uh, re the 2020 Department of Agriculture Sheep Census, 29% of all the yews in, in the national flock are, are, are of a hill breed. Further to that, there's a further 18% uh, of, of the total yews in the country uh, that ha have descended from their crossbreeds from a, from, a, from a hill breed. Our, our Chagas research programme on hill sheep focuses on two main areas. Uh, as part of our overall uh, Better Farm programme, seven of the farms nationally are hill sheep farms. The second part, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, 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 the Better Sheep Farm programme um, and after that, uh, my colleague, Dr. Frank Campion, will talk to you uh, about his research on uh, developing systems for finishing the lambs that are produced uh, on these hill sheep farms. So if we look firstly at the uh, hill sheep farms in the, the Better Far program, there are seven of them in total, uh, covering all the main hill areas in the country. Uh, we've got uh, Donegal, Sligo, North Mayo, Connemara, right over to west of Dingle and Kerry, West Cork and Wicklow. So these represent uh, uh, the farmers in, in all the main hill areas across the country. On joining the programme, all of these farms would have prepared, uh, we would have prepared uh, an individual plan in association with the farms. And the key focus in preparing these plans on these hill farms, uh, firstly, was having a defined breeding policy uh, with a view to breeding a yo flock that will, 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 will perform on the particular hill grazing that's available on the farm. The second focus is on having a strategic plan for marketing the lambs that are produced on this farm. And finally, we aim to have a sustainable grazing system for the hill grazing that's there on the farm. The, the hill farms have a really important role in, in this regard. Uh, in, from, a, from an environmental point of view, first and, uh, but first and foremost, they also have a, a, an economic uh, function for the farm families that are, that are operating in these areas. And also, as I say, from an environmental point of view, they're managing these hill landscapes in these areas. From a, from a breeding point of view, to start with, um, I suppose we focus on a lot on Having yews in the correct body condition score at mating, which has been shown several times to be really important in terms of uh, the, the lamb crop produced, uh, but also uh, looking at areas of uh, making sure that enough of yews are bred to hill, hill bred rams uh, to produce a sufficient crop of replacements from within the flock. In regard to the rams, there's probably a limited availability of performance recorded rams in the hill sector, but with more and more groups of, of uh, farmers uh, looking to start recording data on hill sheep, uh, the future looks bright. And if we, if we can have more and more performance recorded rams, hill rams, hill breed rams available, it can only be a positive for, for hill breeding. As part of um, a, a, our, our Better Farm programme in the farm here in uh, West Cork, uh, we did a small a breed comparison study. There's lots of different uh, breeds and strains of, of hill sheep and a, a lot of breeders will put, form, will, will put forward great arguments why their particular strain or the strain that they have on their farm uh, is better than another strain. So to this end uh, what we did was we put together uh, a number of mating groups uh, of Scottish blackface yews, all from one farm in West Cork, and we we mated them uh, with a Dingle Scotch strain of the Scottish blackface, a Swaledale strain, and also uh, two Lanarks. And the results were interesting in that, even though you, you may say that th these lambs, I suppose, are, I should say, the yews were selected randomly, and the 
the, the oats and lambs were treated exactly the same from, from birth to weaning. In terms of performance, there was very little difference between the different strains of rams. You might say the Lanarks were slightly lighter uh, at birth and at weaning, but it wasn't really, uh, it wasn't really statistically uh, significant. So what we found, that there was as much variation within the breed, so within each of the three strains of rams, as there was uh, across the breeds. So the real focus should be on improving within breed performance rather than looking at across breed performance. In terms of maximising the time on grazing the hill, in drawing up the farm plans, we would really focus on having the appropriate stocking rate of hill yews on the, on the hill and also optimising the time that's spent on the hill. So you're controlling your costs, but the added benefit is that you have a sustainable grazing regime on these really important hill landscapes. Finally, before I hand over to Frank, um, just a really important thing uh, on these farms is having a plan for marketing the lambs. It's a really good practice to, to weigh the lambs at weaning time and assess where you're at, but in all cases really the amount of grass that's available on that farm will pretty much determine whether the lambs can be finished on the farm or whether they, should, they, they are normally sold on as stores. On a lot of farms where grass availability uh, at the back end of the year is needed uh, for your yo flock, most cases these farmers are selling their lambs as stores. Again, the store lamb market can be variable from year to year, but as I say, if there aren't any other options, um, you know, you may have, have no, no option but to go with the store market. Just an example here of, of, of a farmer uh, the, a participant in the Better Farm program. This particular farmer had worked quite hard on improving uh, performance of the flock over the years uh, in terms of breeding, um, culling poorer performing yews from the flock, uh, the yews that were arriving down at weaning time with these lighter lambs were being identified and gradually uh, removed from the flock and as you can see uh, the, the performance uh, for a hill flock was really good. In this particular case, uh, we were looking at somebody that 25% of these lambs uh, in this particular example were crossbred lambs, the remainder were hillbred rams. Um, and it, it was on a farm, they were spending a lot of time on the hill, uh, probably weaning 1.1 to 1.2 lambs per, per yaw joined with the ram. But it's a really useful thing to do at farm level in terms of assessing where you're at at weaning time and making decisions as to where, what you're going to do in terms of finishing lambs. You'll be able to see later on uh, the, the Chaga Store Lamb Calculator in our workshops and that's a really useful tool in terms of assessing how much it's going to cost uh, to finish say the under 25 kil kilogram lambs or equally the 30 to 35 kilogram lambs. And also at that workshop we have a number of, of budgets where we've calculated out uh, the costs associated with, with finishing the different categories of lambs. So with that, I will hand you over to my colleague Frank Campion. So over to yourself, Frank. Okay, thanks very much, Damien. So yeah, look, as Damien said, I'm going to talk about hill lamb finishing and some of the options that are available for them. And as Damien rightly pointed out, you know, it's looking at our lambs at weaning, what are the different categories of lambs we have, this is something that all our better farmers are doing. It's a very useful exercise. How many lambs have we that are in this particularly light category? How many lambs have we that are, you know, 30 kilos plus that will be easier sold and easier finished? And then we make our decisions about what we're going to do with them based on what's on the farm and what facilities are available to us. And a lot of our hill sheep research has made looking at hill lamb finishing is looking at the different options for these. So what we have mainly is looking at light lamb finishing systems. When we say light lamb finishing systems, this is looking at finishing some of these particularly light lambs up to carcass weights of 12 to 16 kilograms. Something that the primary hill farmer can do on his own farm to get some of these lambs out and not be so reliant on a store lamb trade. The other big part of our work at the moment is looking at forage based finishing systems. So over the years we've done a lot of work looking at finishing hill bred lambs on ad lib concentrate diets looking at the different performance targets we can expect from them and what we should be trying to achieve when we, when we put them into these systems. But at the minute what we're looking at towards is forages. So namely looking at some of our forage brassica options, so kale, hybrid brassica, forage rape, while also comparing that back to lambs that have been finished on 
perennial ryegrass swards, you know, permanent pastures and reseeded swards and how that compares to our indoor finishing systems. And Mark Dolan, the Walsh Scholar working on this project, he's inside in the Hill Sheep Workshop and he'll talk to you in much more detail about some of the results and performance figures we're getting from those systems. But I suppose within those two things then we're also looking very much more in depth about what sort of things are driving the performance within each of those systems and how are we achieving what we're achieving. And namely we're looking at rumen function and methane production. So all our hill lambs that come in here are being assessed on performance in terms of growth rates and uh, growth rates and carcass performance. But we're also selecting some of them out and putting them into our portable accumulation chambers, which our breeding and genetics colleagues will show you more about inside in the workshops. And looking to see are their diets and the type of finishing system are coming through, affecting the amount of methane that's coming out, and how, how is their rumen affected by the type of diets that they're grazing, and then linking that back to their performance. And then what we're also looking at is some of the meat quality aspects of it. So you'll have seen from previous visits here over the years, we've looked at meat quality in some of these store land finishing systems, particularly the area of ram taint. I suppose what we're looking more towards now is, you know, with our light land finishing systems, our carcasses that are that bit lighter, they're 12 to 16 kilos, they're not our traditional 18 kilo plus carcass, is there anything different in that type of carcass in terms of meat quality? But also are our forage based systems, are they affecting the quality of the meat or is there any aspects within the meat quality that's been affected by the different diets? And that work is currently ongoing and we have one year of samples taken from both the rumen function and the meat quality aspects and that will continue on over another year or two and we'll, we'll be able to have a proper look at then and see what's, what's driving it. But I suppose for you, for a hill sheep farmer, you're asking what can you do with your lambs? You know, the two options are finishing lambs, selling them as stores, that's very much going to be driven on a year by year basis. You know, what type of lambs do you have? How much grass do you have? What's the price for store lambs? And look, at the light lamb finishing system is something we've been doing for a number of years here in Atten Rye, and what we're seeing is very consistent results. So what we're looking at here is, in a year when store lamb prices are comparatively poor, and we want to finish some of our lambs on farm, but maybe we don't have the grass available to finish lambs to a heavier carcass weight, an 18 to 22 kilo carcass or we don't have the, the facilities later on in the winter to house lambs late into the winter time into January and February. We want them gone quickly but we still want to finish them. So could we finish them at a lighter carcass weight? So in certain parts of the country, particularly in the west, there's now producer groups available where they are marketing and purchasing these lambs to be sold at lighter carcass weights. And I suppose it's important to point out at this stage that if you are finishing these light hill lambs, you do need to have a contract with the factory or go through a producer group. But there are options there available and the system does work. So what do we need to do? What we were doing here was the lambs were coming in shortly after weaning time. They were having an average housing weight of about 25 and a half kilos, but that ranged anywhere from just over 20 kilos up to about 28 kilos live weight. And we were slaughtering them after between six and eight weeks on average at a live weight of 34 kilos for the ram lambs and 33 kilos for the weather lambs. Now these were carefully selected and it's, careful selection is vitally important with this. Because what we're looking for here is we need this lighter carcass, find that we're 12 to 16 kilos, but we need a minimum confirmation on it as well, so of an O2, no less than a carcass confirmation of O2. The reason for that is when the lamb is processed and hanging in the chill, if there's not enough confirmation, not enough meat and fat on it, it won't preserve correctly in the chill and it won't be marketable. So when you're selecting them on weight, you also need to handle the lamb. So a body condition score basically of the lamb, put your hand along the spine as process, between the last rib and the hip to make sure that there's a cover of a cover there on the lamb before you sell it. And what we were seeing with lambs selected like that is we were getting carcass weights around 14 and a half kilograms, kill outs between 43 and 44, so slightly less for the ram lambs compared to the weathers, which we would expect and we would see even at the heavier weights. That's always the case. And I suppose based on an assumed concentrate cost of 500 euro per ton, we don't know what it's going to be by the time we get to later on in the winter, and an assumed sale price of 6 euro per kilo and that'll, like I said, we don't know what that's going to be later in the year. You know, these lambs achieving this type of performance, we're selling for about 88 euro for the ram lambs, nearly 89 euro, and 87 euro 60 for the weather lambs. So I suppose what it's up to every producer to do is to look at it and see, based on what the costs are at the time, what their costs are going to be and what sale price can be achieved, is if that's the price they can get for finishing some of these lighter lambs on their own farm, how does that compare to the store price that they're achieving at the time? I suppose the idea behind it being in a year maybe where store lamb prices for these lighter lambs isn't what we want to be and we have this option, it's quite a viable option for people to use. We saw very little difference between the rams and the weathers in terms of performance. There's small differences in live weight which we would expect but in terms of carcass weight they were about the same. Where we did see the difference between the rams and the weathers was in terms of our selection for slaughter. 
So as I mentioned, all the lambs were being handled before slaughter to make sure they had sufficient carcass or muscle and fat cover. And what we found with the ram lambs is that about 15 to 20% of these tended to hit our target slaughter or live weight, but have insufficient cover. So insufficient muscle and fat cover so they couldn't be slaughtered. And those lambs then need to be held on in the system, brought up to higher live weights, 43, 44 kilos plus, and killed at an 18 plus kilo carcass system. Whereas with the weathers, they did fatten that bit quicker and that bit easier, and a very, very small percentage of these didn't make it into the light land system. They nearly all finished out as light lambs. So that's just worth bearing in mind when you are doing this system that if you are keeping ram lambs, you'll have to allow that maybe a small percentage of them won't hit the spec that you want to hit. So look, I think in terms of the, of the, the, the hill lamb finishing, you know, there's a lot of work going on with it. The light lamb fishing, finishing is very much aimed at our primary hill producer. You know, is there some hill lambs he can finish on his own farm? In terms of our forage based systems, for some farmers, they will have the grass, they will have the facilities to do that. Inside in our workshops, we have two of our better hill farmers and they'll talk to you about, about it. They're coming from opposite ends of the spectrum. One has extra green ground and extra shed capacity. He can finish lambs to 18 to 22 kilos in the winter. The other doesn't. But I suppose the key thing with some of these systems is that they were developing blueprints and performance targets that the people purchasing store lambs can see the options available to them and develop markets further for these store lambs when we hit the market with them in August and early September so that people are confident to buy them, know what targets they can achieve and what performance can be hit with them.